Hello and welcome to our daily lectionary reading. This is Savannah. I know you can't see me on the screen, but I think that the candles are a good uh, setting for our devotion for today. So for today, I am going to lead you through something known as Lectio Divina. And I actually introduced this in a devotional that I did maybe a month or two ago. Um, but I'd like to give a little bit more of a background before I begin, just to talk a little bit more about what Lectio Divina is. I found a piece written by Ruth Haley Barton online, and I'd like to read it to you first. Um, she just goes into a little bit about what this um, spiritual practice is. Lectio Divina, translated as divine or sacred reading, is an approach to the scriptures that sets us up to listen to the word of God of God spoken to us in this present moment. Lectio Divina refers to the ancient practice of divine reading that dates back to the early mothers and fathers of the Christian faith. Referring to the material being read and also the method itself, the practice of Lectio Divina is rooted in the belief that through the presence of the Holy Spirit, the scriptures are indeed alive and active as we engage them for spiritual transformation. Lectio involves a slower, more reflective reading of scripture that helps us to be open to God's initiative rather than being subject to human agendas, our own or someone else's. Through a delicate balance of silence and word, we enter into the rhythm of speaking and listening, which is at the heart of intimate communication. A time of silence before the reading helps us to quiet our inner chaos so that we are prepared to listen. Moments of silence throughout the process help us to be attentive when God does speak and create space for noticing our own inner dynamics and exploring them in God's presence. So we are going to try out this practice once again as we read the lectionary for today, which comes from Mark 7, verses 1 through 13. And I'll walk you through the process a little bit as we go. Um, but there'll be moments of silence and moments of me reading and lots of moments for you to reflect on your own. So if you will join me before we begin, I'd like to do our first step, which is preparation. So I would like you to take a moment to come fully into the present moment. With your eyes closed, let your body relax and allow yourself to become consciously aware of God's presence with you. I am now going to read through the verse three different times. And as I do, I will leave a moment of silence between each before I give you your next prompt. However, if you need more time, please feel free to pause and spend as much time as you need. For our first reading, I would like you to listen for a word or phrase that strikes you or catches your attention. As I allow for that moment of silence afterwards, repeat the word or phrase softly to yourself, pondering it and savoring it as though pondering the words of a loved one. This is the word that is meant for you. Be content to listen simply and openly without judging or analyzing. The Pharisees and some of the religious scholars who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They had noticed that some of the disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without ritually washing them. For the Pharisees, and Jewish people in general, follow the traditions of their ancestors and never eat without washing their, their arms as far as the elbow. Moreover, they never eat anything from the market without first sprinkling it. There are many other traditions which have been handed down to them, such as the washing of cups and pots and dishes. So these Pharisees and religious scholars asked Jesus, why do your disciples not respect the traditions of our ancestors, but eat their food with unclean hands? Jesus answered, how accurately Isaiah prophesied about you hypocrites when he wrote, these people honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me. They, the worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human precepts. You disregard God's commandment and cling to human traditions. Jesus went on to say, how ingeniously you obeyed the commandment of God in order to persevere your own tradition. For Moses said, honor your mother and your father, and anyone who curses mother or father would be put to death. But you say that if someone says to their mother or father, any support you might have had for me is Corban, that is dedicated to God, then they're allowed to do nothing more for their parents. 
In this way, you nullify God's word in favor of the traditions you've handed down. You have been handed down. And you do many other things like this. As I go into this second reading of the gospel verse, I would like you to ask yourself, what is it in your life right now that needs to hear this word? Again, I will leave several moments of silence following this where you can explore thoughts, perceptions, emotions that leave you thinking about where, where are you in this scene? What do you hear as you imagine yourself in the story? or here in these words that are addre specifically addressed to you. How do the dynamics of this story connect to your own life experience? The Pharisees and some of the religious scholars who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They had noticed that some of the disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without ritually washing them. For the Pharisees and Jewish people in general follow the tradition of their ancestors and never eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. Moreover, they never eat anything from the market without first sprinkling it. There are many other traditions which have been handed down to them, such as the washing of cups and pots and dishes. So these Pharisees and religious scholars asked Jesus, why do your disciples not respect the traditions of our ancestors, but eat the food with unclean hands? Jesus answered them, how accurately Isaiah prophesied about you hypocrites when he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human precepts. You disregard God's commandments and cling to human traditions. Jesus went on to say, how ingeniously you evade the commandment of God in order to persevere your traditions. For Moses said, honor your mother and your father, and anyone who curses mother or father must be put to death. But you say that if someone says to their mother or father, any support you might have had from me as Corbin, then, that is, dedicated to God, then that they're allowed to do nothing more for their parents. In this way, you nullify God's word in favor of the traditions you have handed down, and you do many other things like this. As we go into our third and final reading, the prompt for this one is, what is your response to God based on what you have heard and encountered? At this point, you are entering into a personal dialogue with God, sharing with God the feelings the text has aroused in you. And as you do so, you can pour out your heart in complete honesty and prayer and pay close attention to any sense that God is inviting you to act or respond in some way to the word you have heard. You might find it helpful to write your prayers or to journal at this point. The Pharisees and some of the religious scholars who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They had noticed that some of the disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without ritually washing them. For the Pharisees, and Jewish people in general, follow the traditions of their ancestors and never eat without washing their, their arms as far as the elbow. Moreover, they never eat anything from the market without first sprinkling it. There are many other traditions which have been handed down to them, such as the washing of cups and pots and dishes. So these Pharisees and religious scholars asked Jesus, why do your disciples not respect the traditions of our ancestors? but eat their food with unclean hands. Jesus answered, How accurately Isaiah prophesied about you hypocrites when he wrote, These people honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me. They, the worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human precepts. You disregard God's commandment and cling to human traditions. Jesus went on to say, how ingeniously you evade the commandment of God in order to persevere your own tradition. For Moses said, honor your mother and your father, 
and anyone who curses mother or father will be put to death. But you say that if someone says to their mother or father, any support you might have had for me is Corban, that is, dedicated to God, then they're allowed to do nothing more for their parents. In this way, you nullify God's word in favor of the traditions you've handed down. You have been handed down. And you do many other things like this. I thank you for taking the time to do this Lectio Divina with me this morning. Um, I did do somewhat of an abbreviated version, which I know is probably hard to believe since it's a longer video, uh, but I will include the link to the article that I took most of my reading for today from, um, and as it kind of outlines the whole process for you so that if you want to continue to do this and want to do Lectio Divina on your own with different verses that are meaningful to you or maybe the lectionary verses throughout the week, um, then you'll have that option. There's a lot of other good resources too, so I encourage you to, to read more. Um, but as for today, thank you again, and I hope that what you have been thinking on as you read this verse, you continue to let it move you and transform you in the days and weeks to come and let it be a reminder um, each day that God's word is still alive amongst us.